Kappa Cannonier. Blastoise, the big fucking turtle warrior with a gun on its back. I'm just going to call it Blastoise the majority of this video. It's really expensive, it's really sought after, and it's completely almost unavailable on Magic the Gathering Online right now. And that's a frustration that I want to talk about. Don't forget, these videos are brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com. So if you're looking to pick up Magic Singles or Seal product, you can do so by the link in the description below. Get 5% off your order using the code Kenobi at checkout to help support the channel. And big shout out to Ultra Pro as well, who continue to support my unique brand of content. Kappa Cannoneer is a 6 mana 4 4 turtle warrior with improvise, which means you can tap artifacts to pay parts of his colorless cost. Which means if you play your cards right, it's going to cost like a blue and one mana, often blue. Ward 4 means you can't target him unless you play 4 additional mana for any removal spells. And whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, including himself, so he starts off as a 5 5, you put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on him, and it can't be blocked this turn. This card is in one of the new Kamigawa Neon Dynasty Commander precons. It's already upwards of $20. RL physical card price and it was $80 at the beginning of the week I'm now sitting mid-afternoon on Tuesday and it's $95 on Magic the Gathering Online. I went to play the deck that plays four of this or one of the decks that play four of this in Legacy on Monday night stream yesterday. Had to try and borrow these because Cardholder didn't have them. No, it's like the Cardholder. Cardholder helps support me with a free rental account and I will recommend them to the cows come home because they're a great way to get into Magic the Gathering Online. Hell, I'm probably going to do a video on that soon anyway. But the point I'm getting at is these things are like rocking horse shit on modo you can't buy them uh in the precon the precon doesn't exist on magic the gathering online at the moment you only get them as with a lot of commander staples on modo nowadays in the treasure chests the reason that this Blastoise looking motherfucker is seeing play is that it's very similar to both True Name Nemesis and Murktide Regent. It's an expensive high costing card that is actually very cheap in the right kind of deck like Murktide, also has evasion and is a big beta, and then it's like True Name Nemesis in the sense that it has this inbuilt unblockable evasion as well, and it's difficult to kill. When you cost 6 mana you can't be abrupt to and when you come in as a 5-5 five five, you can't be bolted, and when you've got Ward 4, well you can't really be interacted with by most decks because Delver and similar variants in Legacy aren't going to have one or two mana for their removal spell plus another four to get around the ward. Five to six mana is just not going to happen the majority of the time. So this card has started to see play as a four of in decks like eight cast which is an artifact uh, where a deck where you fill out the board and cast thought monitors and thought casts and spam stuff. I played it on the channel quite a bit and I love that deck. It's also seen a bit of play in Bomberman and other variants of artifact based combo decks too. Normally by the time I talk about one of these cards on the channel and how it's redefining an older format like Modern or Legacy, I've gotten to play with it. The situation we're in right now is that I haven't played with it. I've had an opportunity to play with it because I can't fucking get hold of them but outside of spending maybe $400 with the bots and... Spoiler alert, I don't have enough money to spend $400 on digital cards even if I could resell them at some point. And this is not the first time that a legacy stable has been brought to us by the, uh, the Commander Precon. And whilst True Name Nemesis is perhaps the most famous example of a card finding its way into legacy after being a uh, Commander printed Magic the Gathering card with no consideration for legacy and demanding a price tag. At one point or another, these things were 30 bucks and now they're only three thanks to reprints in Battle Bond and Times Borrow Remastered and Commander Products 2. It's also fallen out of favor in legacy, but before True Name Nemesis, there were other examples of this. In Commander 2011, we we had both Flusterstorm and Scavenging Goose. Both cars demanded a really high price tag and still did for the longest time as well. Uh, Scavenging Goose got reprinted into uh, Standard a little bit later. We also had a Jewel of the Planes August 2014 promo, which I remember being like a hot ticket. Like you're getting your money back for buying in to Jewels of the Planes Walkers on Xbox or PlayStation or whichever. I remember the PC version actually got the Scavenging Goose one. That was a, like a getting your money back kind of situation. Now that's worth a dollar. Meanwhile, Flusterstorm still sees tons of play in Legacy and Vintage and sees a price tag of, oh, it's also a, a modern card now too, and a price tag of around $20 after only getting three printings and a Judge promo. It's super interesting to see the prices on some of these cards. Like, True Name Nemesis was expensive for a long, long time, and I can remember a time when Scavenging Ooze was a premium uh, rare, and now it's a couple of dollars, because it's had two reprintings through Standard alone. I don't think there's inherently a problem with putting cards into Legacy through the Commander Precons that are good. I think Scavenging Ooze and Flusterstorm, and to a lesser extent, True Name Nemesis have all been pretty good for the format. True Name Nemesis, I've been up and down on that card for a long time, but, but Scavenging Ooze and Flusterstorm are fantastic. And we've seen other cards too into sort of fringe archetypes. Marion of Clan Neltoff, Telnoff, 
Neltoff. I'm looking at it right now. Clan Neltoth was also a card that was originally put in Commander, but saw some play in Nick Fit. There's nothing wrong with them printing cards into the format via this stuff. Hell, it's kind of just part and parcel of what happens to the format now. And they can't be blamed for the idea that a card will be powerful because I don't expect them to test for the older formats because they tell us they don't. And I'll be honest with you, the development teams that make Magic are probably smaller than they should be considering how much money the game makes. So I'm not doing this video to be really critical of the idea that they make cards that end up being so powerful that they become format staples for even just a while, let's say, because some of these cards have fallen out of favour. There's nothing wrong with that inherently. The problem comes with the accessibility issue. This is something that I hammer home all the time in my videos, is that I want people to be able to play older formats. And we already have barriers to entry in dual lands and reserve list cards. So to see new archetypes crop up around new cards, things like your Ragavans and your Merktides from Modern Horizons, or your cards from Commander products like Blastoise and Scavenging Ooze, is good, especially if they help you to move away from dual lands. Astrolabe was good for that in many ways. However, there is the flip side of when the format gets completely fucked by these things. Astrolabe and Merktide being good examples of fucking the format. But if we have things that don't fuck the format, they just reinvigorate old archetypes, let people buy into to new archetypes, things like Blastoise, although again, I could be making a video in a month's time about how it's oppressive. Hell, I haven't played with or against it yet. I can't. Can't get hold of the fucking thing. So if those cards are being printed into Magic, they need to be accessible. When we talk about paper here, they're in a commander product, and they will get reprinted in time. We've seen it in the past. Hell, look at the price of Scavenging Ooze and Trina Nemesis now. So you will see it, but it might take a year, two years sometimes to get around to reprinting them, which is a shame, especially considering they have so much space to reprint. Then if you take into account the fact that it is kind of locked to its own environment as well, this is a discussion we had on my Discord recently about Great Henge, a card that is locked to its own set. It means that it's difficult to reprint in any set that's not themed around, for example, in this case, mythology and and the, the henges, or in the case of Kappa Cannoneer, a world where there are turtle people. That doesn't stop them ending up in Modern Horizons, Modern Masters, Eternal Masters, Double Masters, other tertiary or periphery sets like uh, your, your Battle Bonds, I guess, was kind of quite open with what it could have. Uh, what's the other one I'm thinking of? Oh, Commander Legends. That was the other thing. Commander Legends and other pre-cons as well. And we will undoubtedly see another Commander Legends this year. But then the problem really comes in that Legacy and Vintage's two formats live online primarily on Magic the Gathering Online. A platform that is largely still making shit tons of money for Wizards but gets forgotten because it just prints money in spite of the fact that it looks like an MS-DOS program that's ran off the back of nasal hair and yeast. And instead of having the Commander Precons on there now, hell, half the fucking Commander cards don't even make it to Magic the Gathering Online on first go. They get added a little bit later. I think ugh, I'd have to check, but I believe there are some cards from the last Commander products that still aren't on Modo. Magic the Gathering Online has for quite some time now not been an accurate depiction of what Paper Magic is. I used to make videos campaigning for Palace Jailer to be put onto there. It took them like a year to get Palace Jailer on there off of After Conspiracy 2. It's kind of mad, but again, I don't think they have the development teams that are able to handle this stuff because they're not resourced appropriately by Wizards of the Coast. So instead, the Kappa Cannoneer, the Blastoise, the, the new artifact version of Merktide, is only available in treasure chests with a really low drop rate, which then responds, which is responsible for them being eighty fucking dollars, ninety five dollars at time of recording. Hell, after this video goes out later on today, they might even hit a hundred as people buy up the last ones in circulation. It's kind of dumb and it's frustrating, and I really wish someone at Wizards of the Coast would take note of this and try and fix these product problems. Like, Magic the Gathering Online has a big benefit of being a program that there are rental servers attached to and eternal format decks are cheaper than what they are in paper by a huge margin with dual lands and power nine for example for vintage being pretty cheap online the problem comes when these new super staples whether that be kappa cannoneer your ragabans or your merc tides or even just things like force of negation from modern horizons they demand a huge price tag and have a very minimal injection into the supply each time they get pumped out in treasure chests and similar. I still think that in spite of all this, the Magic the Gathering Online economy is, well, it's more of an economy than Arena because you can buy in and sell out, which means it is an economy and you can get your money back. Where Arena is kind of like a, a, a skinner box or or just a black hole, like a, just a fucking sinkhole for your money that they keep making worse and worse. So I just wanted to throw that in there, that Modo isn't as bad as Arena, I guess. But it's still frustrating to see content creators and players, and this isn't just about being a content creator, it's about everyone, right? Some players don't want to spend $400 on a playset of cards on a digital client to play their favourite legacy deck or a new legacy deck. It really... 
it, it, it stunts growth and innovation within the format and the community as well. And then it also leads to people not making content about this stuff, which then again stunts the growth, innovation and changes within the format and the community. It kind of just sucks, really, at the end of the day. Hopefully the accessibility gets fixed in some way. Maybe they up the drop rate or inject them in some other way. I don't know what the solution is. Well, I do know what the solution is. It's make them drop more regularly in chests and such. Or have uh, plans to put them onto Modo in a different uh, draft environment uh, much sooner than they probably... There's probably no plans for that right now. But it might show up in a, a draftable um, Vintage Masters set in the future. Ultimately, the problem isn't with super powerful cards in Commander Precons. Although there is a balance, a, a tight line, a, a thin line to be, to be walked. But the problem comes in with, when are we going to see these cards again? When are they going to get reprinted? Are they just going to go up and up in value? And I do think their value is slightly hyperinflated. Because when people hear the words modern or legacy, they think the cards then deserve a price tag that they probably don't. Is the demand really outstripping the existence of these pre-cons that must have been mass-produced to fucking ridiculous levels? Probably not, right? I will admit the legacy isn't as big as I want it to be. So I do reckon that kind of changes the price tag a little bit. People buy into that hype. It creates like a price memory effect. Almost like a price projection effect. Either way, it's the, the fucking reprint policy going forward that's going to keep these cards expensive and inaccessible. And it's just another frustration that really boils my piss. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Have you had a chance to play with the card yet in your local commander group? Have you had a chance to play in Legacy yet or Vintage? Let me know down below. I've been Vince, also as pleasant can I be on the internet. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all soon. Ta-ta for now.